Can an Amazon electric pressure washer handle all your needs? We'll find out in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. We've got the Rock and Rocker. Yeah, that's the name, Rock and Rocker electric pressure washer. Specifically, this is a 3000 PSI, 2.5 gallons per minute pressure washer. Comes with the wand, comes with the hose, obviously the cord, and then four different tips with a soap nozzle as well. All of that is included in one great price. Now we're gonna dive into the features and the details and kind of explain those numbers and what we think of them. Uh, then we're gonna use this thing and come back. We've got a surprise for you, by the way, so make sure you stick around for that. Then we'll discuss pricing and warranty and let you know what we thought of it. Okay, here we have the Rock and Rocker pressure washer. Uh, we're gonna unbox this thing here in a second, but just wanted to touch on a couple of things. Number one, uh, this guy is made in China. Um, and it has some markings here on the box. I wanted to kind of discuss this, at least while we had it here. Uh, so it says max pressure is 3,000 PSI. You can pretty much throw that out the window. Rated pressure is 2,300 PSI. That's the real number we need to be talking about. Uh, and then it talks about power is 1,800 watts. Why does that matter? Well, because this is an electric pressure washer and we know it plugs into a wall. So we're gonna pull two numbers off of this. First, we're gonna take 1800 watts and convert that to roughly horsepower. And horsepower is roughly 750 watts per HP. So if we take 1800 and we divide by 750, that gives us roughly 2.4 horsepower. Now the other number we wanna pull from this is we wanna pull amps. So in other words, how many amps are we drawing under 1800 watts? Well, that's easy to know because we've got a 120 volt plug, right? So we take 1800 and we divide by 120 because we know amps times volts equals watts. So we've got the watts. And so to back that out, we divide by the number of volts. So 1800 divided by 120, of course, that gives us 15 amps. Now, why did we say of course? Because we know that on a standard household outlet, so that outlet that kind of looks like this, we know that's a 15 amp outlet and the max you're gonna draw off of that is 15 amps. That includes your shop as well. And the plug in here is gonna look like that as well. Now, if it had the little extra stick out right there, so it has a little plus sign here or a little T, that's a 20 amp plug, but we know that's not the case. This is not a 20 amp tool, this is a 15 amp tool. So the max we can draw off this is 15 amps. So we know at 1800 watts, we're drawing 15 amps on a 120 volt circuit, which is gonna give us 2.4 horsepower. Now, why do I say all that? Because they're claiming that they get a max flow of 2.5 GPM. I think you can throw that out the window. Rated flow is 2.0 GPM. I think that's getting closer to the truth if it can even flow that. Because if you look at this, if you look at 2.5 GPM and 2300 PSI or a max pressure of 3000, that's typically on a gas pressure washer, uh, a six horsepower or say a Honda 190, GC 190, which would be a six horsepower unit to make that kind of pressure. Now an electric pressure washer is a little more efficient than a gas because you get that instant torque of a motor, yada, 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 but it's not twice as efficient. So at 2.4 horsepower, and it making a, a gas pressure washer get to, to these numbers have to have a six horsepower. Again, I just doubt that we're hitting these numbers here. So now that we're there, now that we've confused you right out of the gate, let's take this thing apart and or at least open this box and let's see what's inside here. So what do we get in the kit? It looks like we get the uh, Rock and Rocker electric pressure washer. Uh, looks like on and off. So there's our on and off switch. Water inlet here on the bottom. Looks like our 
electrical plug, it's like built-in breaker as well. So it will trip and we can reset it right there from the unit. So that's nice. Uh, I don't know how long that cord is. We'll look here in a moment. And here is where our hose is going to attach. Looks like a 20 foot, 20 or 25 foot hose. Definitely not a 50. Not anything exciting as far as uh, industrial duty at all. So that's going to push it in with that O-ring and then finish tightening that up to pull that in. So that O-ring in the middle is what's actually going to seal that and then just pull that in by tightening it. Not crazy about this. This is not getting, giving us any uh, industrially standard uh, types of fitting. So you're going to kind of be locked into uh, to using their stuff. Yeah, so it looks like it locks in just by, um, yep, that right there. So using different wands and things like that would be a real pain. You'd have to go to a different hose for sure before you could go to a different wand. So there's the wand and here's the extension. And again, even here. So no industrially standard fittings here. Looks like it. Okay. So it looks like you pull this sleeve here and then you have to rotate the nozzle to lock it in. So you can't just push it in. You have to pull this out, push it in and turn it and that locks it into place. Kind of a pain, to be honest. So you have to pull this out, push this in, lock it, pull this out, push this in and turn it to unlock it as well. So that locks it in. So it looks like we get a zero red nozzle, a 15 degree orange nozzle, a 25 degree green nozzle, and a 40 degree white nozzle. Get all those. And then we also get the soap dispenser as well. Kind of a small container. Looks like you turn it a quarter turn, lock it down, maybe an eighth turn. And no adjustment there, just a, uh, just an opening here as far as shooting foam. We'll, uh, we'll try that out. Pretty self-explanatory, pull the tip back or pull the ring back and that locks into place. So pretty standard there as far as the, uh, the tip attachment, but not so on the gun attachment. Looks like our electrical cord hanger goes over there. We can hang our cord. Looks like our hose hangs back here. Then our wand attachment there. And then we can put casters on it if we want to. I'm not going to worry about that right now. That'll just pop on the bottom. Looks like you can even snap this out of the base. I'd rather just leave it on a wider base there. Right here at the top, we can pop in our nozzles. So again, our 0, 15, 25, and 40. Not sure where our soap container goes. Hey, there you go. It's nice there. Of course, that's going to fall out. But anyway, let's go out and use this. Okay, first thing we want to do is check the GPM literally at zero PSI. So right there at the handle, we'll crank this thing up and uh, see how much water we can pump out in one minute. We'll weigh that and we'll know exactly how many gallons we've got. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Okay, ready, set, go. Let's go away and see. Okay, we didn't zero out our scale on the bucket itself, so we're gonna have to subtract the bucket. The bucket weighs one pound and 12 ounces. 
We'll put our water on here. We know water weighs 8.35 pounds. So we've got 17.2. So let's take 17.2 and we'll subtract the one pound 12 ounces. So that leaves us 15.6 pounds. And we know 15.6 divided by 8.35. So we'll take 15.6 divided by 8.35 equals 1.86 gallons. So we get 1.86 gallons per minute. That is at the wand with no pressure. Let me zero it out with that water weight in it. And then, so there's our 15.6 pounds right there. Because now I've got an empty bucket and it's saying negative 15.6, negative, negative 15.65, whatever. So there's our 15.6 pounds of water weight confirming that. So again, 1.86 GPM. Okay, so we've got the Rock and Rocker pressure washer set up. We've got water going to it. Uh, we've got our wand connected. Uh, we're going to first try the soap dispenser here. We've got a little foam cannon soap in there. If we can figure out how to connect this thing. Oh, looks like that fell off. Okay, let's go back on. Okay, there we go. So now we've got this connected. Straighten that out. There we go. And so let's see how well this shoots. I think we're ready to roll. Just turn this on. Now we're ready to go. Okay, as you can see, we've got quite a bit of filth on one of our doors here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that with the, uh, with the foam cannon and see how well it does. Gotta say, not too bad at all. Let that sit one moment and we'll uh, change out our wand. Gonna put our 40 degree tip on there and we'll hammer this here in one second. You can see, especially up by the windows. All right. So definitely with the 40 degree tip, we're having to get pretty close, I would say six inches or so, and move pretty slow as well, because if we move too fast, we're leaving quite a bit of grime behind. But doing a pretty good job as long as we're moving slow. Let's go to the, uh, go to the 25 degree tip. Still, we can't move too fast. We gotta stay. We gotta stay pretty slow uh, to get that work done. And that just tells me that's GPM. So if we look at pressure and GPM, number one, you can multiply your pressure times your GPM to get a cleaning unit. That's kind of a pressure washer term cleaning unit that tells you you're the, the ability to clean something using your pressure and GPM. Explain that a little bit better. Say high pressure, let's just say this put out 3000 PSI. It does not, but let's just say it does put out 3000 PSI. And this is say, let's just give it two gallons per minute. And we take a gas powered pressure washer at 
uh, 3,000 PSI and four gallons per minute, what's the difference? Well, you could consider one being able to say, you know, throw a BB at 100 miles an hour and the other able to throw a golf ball at 100 miles an hour. So that tells you the difference in the cleaning ability of a, you know, giving PSI and GPM versus just getting PSI. So PSI is definitely uh, the power to kind of break things up. The gallons per minute is the ability to kind of wash everything away and uh, provide that constant flow or that more flow of more water. That's your gallons per minute. Still, not too bad. I, I'll be honest, not too bad. And it looks like the longer that's sitting, the faster I'm able to go. So I'm definitely able to move faster the longer that soap sits on there and the longer that water sits on there to break up that little bit of uh, algae or whatever's on. We're going to go to the uh, 15 degree tip. But again, really, even though I should be, be able to get more PSI out of this, uh, more pressure, it's still, I'm not able to move very fast. So on something like this garage door, if I'm able to clean with that wider tip, I'm going to go wide as possible. Number one, that cuts down on the pressure that I'm even throwing against the, the surface. And number two, I can go just as fast and I'm covering a wider swath with that, in this case, a 40 degree tip. So if I've still got to go slow, then why not use a tip that's giving a wider swath to get things done? So definitely getting more work done with this 40 degree tip because you look, I can get a whole section there. I will say also, it uh, turning back on is very quick. A lot of times on these electric pressure washers, you'll have that few seconds of delay. This is pretty much instantaneous as, as soon as I pull the trigger. Now, when it comes to concrete, that's where PSI and GPM are just a big deal, especially you need a ton of pressure to clean concrete. So this is the 40 degree tip. I gotta tell you, that's better than I thought it was gonna do. Change over to the 15. So able to get a little more cleaning action. And there's some stuff like I was talking about. You just can't move really fast with that stuff. Actually, once that's soaking in, it's actually blasting off pretty good. But on concrete is where you're gonna notice with a higher GPM and pressure unit, you're gonna do better cleaning. If you're doing a lot of concrete work, 
probably electric pressure washer is not the unit for you. So if this one looks remarkably similar, it's because it is. In fact, when they offered to send me one of these, I required that they send me two. I wanted one to use for ourselves to show you guys. And the other, I put in the hands of some car detailers over at Michael's Auto Detailing for a few days to see what they think about it. Because I knew they would give it kind of some durability testing that would maybe take me uh, weeks or months to even do, and they could do it in a short amount of time. Okay, so now I've got the uh, this unit here that's been on site at the detailers for five solid days. So did they use it a lot during those five days? I'm absolutely sure that they did. Uh, probably more so than, than most anybody because they're washing cars like crazy, probably eight to 10 hours a day. But does that equal years of use at your home when I'm sure you're wanting to get out of this? Maybe, maybe not, but I just wanted to give you, fill you in on what we found after five days of use. And what we found is that the pump is already seeming to go out. We get a little different sound in the unit as well as it just doesn't clean near as fast. I'll show you over here. Now I have already soaked this uh, with soap and let it sit for a little bit. And, and you'll see here that it just goes a little bit slower and this will increase as the more we use it, the, uh, the less pressure I'll get out of this unit. So I'm not able to go near as fast as I was once it soaked in on the newer one. And here's the new one again. So here's the new unit running. And here's the old unit running. Same water, uh, same plug plugged in, same tip, 40 degree tip. You hear we've got kind of a high-pitched scream coming out of there. We think the pump's probably going, maybe the motor, but def definitely sounds like the pump may be going on it. And again, versus the newer. Surprise, we had two of them. We had one we put out in the field, as I mentioned at Michael's Auto Detailing, where they use a pressure washer every single day on every car that they, uh, the actual wash and detail. So they're using their soap cannons, and with that you need a pressure washer. And so they put it to work, and it lasted five whole days. Now it didn't completely fail, it just started kind of, you know, falling off the deep end as far as pressure goes. The uh, motor or the pump started making noises, and we got to replicate that a little bit. 
showed some of the noise that's coming out of it. Not sure how much that came across the mic, uh, but definitely a higher pitch whine on the older unit, on the five day older unit, as well as you'll see the, the pressure start to drop more and more. And they said basically it dropped off to where it was almost unusable, but that took a while of it heating up and that happening. So is it going to run for you to do small jobs, things like that? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Here's our point with it. This is a $150 unit. Now we proved that there's no way it's putting out 2.5 GPM. In fact, I think we showed it was somewhere around that 1.8, 1.9 GPM, which is what they claimed on their working GPM or whatever. So they're close on that. PSI, is it hitting 3,000? I doubt that as well. I think they claim 2,300 on working PSI. Uh, and we showed you, you know, uh, again, we discussed that initially, what it takes for a gas powered unit to get there. And that takes like a six horsepower motor. And we're definitely not there on 1800 watts. We're somewhere around that two and a half horsepower, you know, two, ho two horsepower to two and a half horsepower. So again, we doubt that it's hitting the numbers that they claim. Now, as far as doing work, we were quite impressed. We thought we'd see less performance when we were actually cleaning, especially on the concrete. So here's my uh, recommendation to you. If you're doing a lot of concrete work, go to a gas powered unit. You're just not going to be happy with an electric unit. Now, if you're just doing small jobs on your patio or something like that, an electric may work for you. If you're doing cars, things like that, that may work for you as well. Now you may say, well, Tim, this is not meant for, you know, be everyday use, but hey, here's my point is that we showed what happens to it when it does get used every day. And just to give you something in relation, this is a $150 unit. I get it, it's pretty cheap for the, the numbers that they claim. For that equal unit, it's say a Greenworks or a Ryobi, you're gonna be somewhere in that $250, $300 range. Yes, that's double, but like the detail shop, they had a Greenworks working for two solid years every single day working it like that and it lasted for two solid years in fact still runs today just not quite as good so that gives you an idea and you know warranty on a ryobi or a green work something like that you can take it back to home depot or wherever you got it from and be able to you know turn in that warranty or to actually exercise the warranty or something like the rock rocker that i think is uh maybe warranty for 30 days 90 days you're going to have to send it back through Amazon or get uh, in direct contact with the uh, with the actual manufacturer, which is a, a China manufacturer, so not a headquarters in the U.S. So I'm not trying to down the unit. I'm just trying to give you all the data you need to make a sensible purchase. Again, looking at just the performance, it actually did a lot better than we thought it would. But longevity wise, I think you're going to have some durability issues and you're basically you're paying for what you're getting. Uh, I just makes a little sense in this one here. So we'd recommend if you're buying an electric pressure washer, buy something out of a store and, or at least online that you know the store so that you can actually exercise the warranty if you need to. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? By all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.